What is up guys? My name is Mark San Maria. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my RC vlog. And this is my Traxxas TRX4 build. And it is finally complete. So what it actually started out as uh, is the Traxxas TRX4 Bronco. Which it was a beautiful car but it kind of lacked a little bit of the performance on the trail. It was super top heavy. It was almost too pretty to drive around. So I decided to do some mods to it and that was my project. So I'm gonna run you guys through the different mods I did. Obviously, God, this thing is just beautiful. I went with the white on black. My real car is white on black. I, I think white with black wheels is the coolest looking car ever. So that's what I went with. And it's so freaking pretty. I, I don't even wanna drive the dang thing. I drove it around the driveway and I was like, it's, it's way too pretty, but I'm not gonna be that guy. I'm actually gonna take it on the trails tomorrow. So this is the last time it is gonna be this freaking beautiful. Oh, it's gonna hurt. And you guys who have been scaling and scale crawling know that when these cars look this pretty, it's, it's really hard to drive them. So let me run you through the mods that I did. So before I go into the mods, I do want to give a shout out to my sponsors. Indy RC World, ProLine RC, ProTech RC. They really pulled through on this build. They shipped really fast. I didn't wait for anything. Indy RC World, Jason Fitzfarrow up there. I mean, I could send him a text. He had it coming. Proline ship. I mean, I got all this stuff in like two or three days right after order. So big shout out to them. So the very first thing I did is I stripped out all the unneeded plastic and weight. So there was a lot of freaking plastic on this car. There was these big plastic shrouds that covered the tires. I took those off. The battery, the battery tray was big and bulky. I took those off. They had these rock guards on the side. I took that off. The body, I took the body off because the body was super freaking heavy. And you could tell that it was it was super heavy. It, you know, I wasn't, I was having problem, problems grabbing traction, going up rocks, uh, the, the thing would roll a lot. If you saw that first video of me going crawling, I, I did a lot of rolling. So I did a lot of weight reduction to this thing. So again, part of the weight reduction that I did was I got a new body. So this is the ProLine Jeep Wrangler body. Jeep Wranglers are like the original off-road awesome car so obviously i need a jeep wrangler body this fit perfect uh, one of the concerns i had was that the wheelbase so the wheelbase on the bronco the trx4 bronco was actually a little bit shorter than the defender i was a little bit concerned that the wheelbase would be too short so i actually put it on here it i mean you could argue that it's not too short so this is what it looks like with the body on you can kind of see how the tire actually looks like it's a little position forward, but whenever I push it all the way down, it doesn't hit. And you actually don't want the wheelbase to be any longer because I don't want it to hit the back part. The front part of the fender flare is okay because it's kind of at an angle. The back part is bad. So I'm gonna keep it how it is. I do have the, the trailing arms to make it longer to extend the wheelbase, but I'm gonna keep it how it is right now. I think it's perfect. So I did the body. If you if you didn't get to see it, I did also a video on how to paint the body. The other thing about this body is the way to make this body look cool. So I saw a couple, I've seen a couple of people with this body and it didn't look as freaking clean as this one. And what people are doing is they're painting it all one color. To get the full effect and the full freaking awesomeness out of this body is to paint the fenders and rocker panels a different color. So as you can see on mine, I painted the fenders and rocker panels a silver to match with the white and then it came with silver stickers which whenever you just have silver and white is freaking super sick and i mean i couldn't oh god you guys are seeing the side with the actual scratches on it i did drive it into the rocks and it rolled a little bit but it's not too bad but i couldn't be any happier with the way this body turned out and how the car looks with the body so the next thing i noticed when i was crawling is that i was lacking a lot of traction i called a lot of my crawling friends scale crawling friends and they all told me to get the ProLine Hyraxes. I have a video of putting them together and everything, but these are the ProLine Hyraxes. That was the other upgrade I did. I did put, and you didn't see it in the video where I put these together, I did put weight in my front wheels and tires. So my front tires are a little bit heavier, and it's so whenever I get it up over a rock, I'll have a little bit more weight down, and it will pull forward. So that was the pointer that I got from a couple of my friends that were scale crawls. Put all the weight you possibly can to the front. There are no weights in the rear. I thought about putting weights in the rear wheels, but I didn't. I just put it in the front. They're bead locks, so I can always put them back in there. But 
Speaking of them being beadlocks, I did mount the wrong side of the beadlock on the wrong side of the tire. And that is key because if you if you lock the, the part that's supposed to go on the outside on the inside, it actually rubs the axle and it doesn't spin. That was a big pain because I had a whole bunch of screws in these beadlocks. They're not really that bad, but I don't want to keep screwing them in and out because I don't want to strip anything. One other thing about me putting these tires on is they were a little bit bigger than the original. So I did have to shave the front bumper a little bit. And it actually looks, as you can see these, these little indentions here, it actually looks like it was made that way. I actually just cut an angle straight up and then just cut it off. But whenever I turned, it would actually hit the bumper a little bit. These are not the original bumpers that came on the Traxxas Bronco. These are the Defender bumpers. I changed those out because I don't want chrome bumpers on my freaking, on my, my Jeep. So I've got the Defender bumpers and they turned out really good. But as you can see, I'm not one, running one in the rear. I'm going with the no bumper light. But you know, whenever I was crawling the first time, I could tell that it would like grab. I didn't want it to grab. So I took the rear bumper completely off. And also the rear bumper kind of stuck out a lot because you're supposed to be able to put that gas can on there. So I didn't really like that, but I'm really happy with the way it looks without bumpers. So another upgrade I did is I put in an upgraded servo. I did not blow my original servo. The original servo was actually fine. It just, people kept saying that that's what people were breaking. I don't want to be that guy that's out on the trail and breaks servo. And I also found out Thanks to a good friend that I, I met crawling from this guy named Steven, he actually told me that ProTech makes one of the best um, crawling servos you can get, which I'm, pro I'm sponsored by ProTech, so obviously I had to get, but it's the ProTech RC 370 TBL, and it's over 600 plus ounces of torque, and it just looks sick. It's waterproof. It's actually a little bit heavier than the original, so it's adding a little bit more weight to the front, but I ended up putting one of those servos in there and I'm excited to see what it does. So one of the other Traxxas parts that I added, I not only added the bumpers, but I also added the metal servo horn. So the original servo horn is plastic, but Traxxas makes a servo horn that's actually made for the TRX4 that's metal. And lucky for me, Protec servos are the exact same spline count, which is 25 tooth splines. So I could just use that metal servo horn. So I didn't have to do much and it looks completely stock and original and I got the metal servo horn. So aside from just the servo horn bumpers, I also added, and this is kind of lame. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing, but if you're a scale, scaler guy, you're gonna know how important these little things are. I added the red bumper hooks, the tow hooks. I know that's a really small mod, but it's just the little things that count. I've seen some people with a tow hitch. I kind of want that too. <laughs> so one of the other things I did, since I took the battery tray out, I ended up mounting the battery in the front. And in order to mount the battery in the front, you have to run a smaller battery. I've seen people run the, the shorty packs, the two cell shorty packs. I'm running a 3S. The ESC can handle 3S. You get a lot better run time on a 3S. So I'm running a 3S. I ended up buying two of the Traxxas 1400 milliamp three cell batteries and they mount perfect in the front. And actually, if you get the Bronco with the shrouds, there's actually a perfect spot that um, houses the battery in the front. But because I took the shrouds off, I had to mount that plate back on here. So I actually mounted the plate with zip ties on the front. It looks really good though. I mean, you can, I mean, you can barely tell. It looks like it's actually made that way. But I mounted it on there. I put some put some uh, Velcro on there and then just put a Velcro strap so it doesn't move. And it moved my battery to the front, it's lighter and all the little bit of weight it did added, it added it obviously to where I wanted it to be. So, excited about that mod. So, I talked about removing the shrouds. One other thing I forgot to mention is, in order to remove the shrouds, the shrouds are, in it, the shock tower is integrated in the shrouds. So, and the shrouds are the parts that cover the tire. On the Defender, it's actually mounted on the body. On the Bronco, it's mounted on the chassis. On the, the kit, it's also mounted on the chassis. So if you end up needing to take these shrouds off, you have to get the shock towers. I end up getting the tracks of shock towers. I, I, I mentioned the part number in another video, so if you wanna see in detail how I did that, you can go check out the other video that I have. But that's what made the, the taking off the shrouds possible. So that's pretty much it. Again, I want to give another shout out to my sponsors, NDRC World, ProTech, 
Proline RC, they really pulled through. I'm, I'm really happy to have them as support. Uh, I don't plan on doing much more to this car unless I see something that I really, really need. I kind of want to do the lights. Uh, I, I start to notice that because my car is actually lighter, you know, I'm thinking maybe I should go lighter in shock oil, maybe even lighter in my springs, but I don't want it to have too much torque, uh, torque twist whenever I go, so or whenever I hit the throttle. So we'll see how that works out. But thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in on this build. It was a really fun one for me. This isn't the only build. This is only the first build I'm going to do. I'm going to do some crawling tomorrow. I'll get some video clip of that. But I got to go back into racing. Uh, I got a big race this weekend in Shreveport, Louisiana. So that's the RC Pro Series round one. So I got to get my stuff ready. I'm gonna, and uh, yeah, I'm going to crawl tomorrow. Then when I come home, I'm going to get my stuff ready. And then I'm heading out this weekend. But thanks for tuning in, guys. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Turn on that notification bell. If you have any anything you want to see, any type of project you want to check out, I'll be happy to do it for y'all. Uh, the next project I'm doing is actually going to be a cool one. <coughs> I'm going to test out all the Traxxas power systems. And what I mean by that is the XL5 and then the VXL. But what a lot of people don't realize is there's two different types of VXLs. And what I've seen is people doing differences on what makes them different. One's a two-pole, one's a four-pole. but the only metric that really counts is how fast it goes. But I'm going to be doing that and I actually bought all the VXL systems just so I can do it brand new. So it's going to be a perfectly fair test. But you're going to want to watch that one. So tune in. All right, guys. See you all soon.